Uh, I think it'll be an illness reported on the uh, on the injury report. Not COVID illness. Illness. What's your concern level for obviously a hugely significant player for the for the game? Do you... No designation. How is that Christian Fulton come along this week? Good. It's been good to see him back. You know that was a player that had improved, that had. Gone in, gotten better each and every week, um, and was really starting to play well, building some confidence, you know. And then had a, you know, suffered a, an injury, required a few weeks, and so um, this was the return to play. And we'll see kind of how he responded to the last couple of days of practice, and then to try to make a decision on him, um, obviously before the game. When you're deciding like who's gonna wear the green dot uh, headset, like how much, like what factors into that? And, and just like with the way modern offenses are, because a lot of times it's a linebacker, and you know, mm -hmm. you gotta shuffle them off the field in a certain package. Yeah, well, you'd like to try to have somebody that doesn't come off the field, right? There's some, some moving parts there. You know, what, what packages are they in with and, and who, what kind of communicator are they? Um, you know, so then, you know, there's some, and then if they, they are, they do come out, you know, are you able to get, you know, you just can't have two on the field at the same time. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that go into that. But most importantly is probably you'd like to find the one that is out there that is communicating in the middle part of the defense so that you can get it on both ends. And I know that, you know, some teams have a safety, um, you know, a, a lot of people do it differently. But for, predominantly it's been a linebacker. How did that? and uh, Deontay Foreman do in pass protection last week? And Adrian was talking about that you guys do things a little differently in what you require the running backs to do as pro and yeah, I'm sure that's gonna be the case every everywhere we go. You know, you go to another team, there's gonna be some things that they're gonna ask their guys to do. Um, and so, you know, I would say that the majority of those guys, what they did last week was on first and second down. Um, you know, a role for Jeremy's on third down and Jeremy does a great job with that and so you know, I think when the pressure came or when they brought people on first and second down, I thought they were, you know, they were efficient in what they do. They need to improve just like everybody else. But, um, you know, when you play at, a, you know, different teams, I'm sure they ask, you know, some do, do some stuff differently. What makes Alvin so special for them? And if, if he doesn't play, do you see maybe the same things, just Ingram, just a bigger, heavier guy? Well, they put a lot on his plate. You know, I mean, I think – as far as percentage of offense, I think when you talk about you know where Derek was for us and you know where, where Alvin Kamara are and where you know McCaffrey's out there, I mean that's you know, those are premier players and he has uh, speed, he's quickness, he runs behind his pads. You know it's not just like he's a you know one hit takes him down. You know what I mean it breaks a lot of tackles. Um, I've always had a lot of respect for him. I think he catches the ball um, well. He's a good route runner. Um, He'll protect, you know, he watched Seattle. He comes back and, you know, protects Adam. <clears throat> you know, when he blitzes, he's not afraid to run in between the tackles. You know, it's not like this is just toss sweeps and he runs the entire offense. He gets downhill when he has to get downhill. And you know, he's, a, he's a really good player. Are you, are you in a position where maybe you have to consider putting Julio on IR to get past the hamstring issue? I don't know if we're in a position to do really anything. We're just trying to find 48 guys that um, that are available that, that can help the team win. And, you know, that's a decision that we end up making, we'll, we'll make. But I don't I don't think we're in that position at, at all. You do think uh, a, a second uh, week of practice and, and one game under Adrian Peterson's belt will, you know, help him going into this weekend? I mean, I think blocking better and running better will help anybody that's back there, you know. I, th I think that you know he's practiced well. Him and Deontay have practiced well, and you know the the verbiage and understanding, and you know where where things may be on certain runs that we have, and where the cut may be. Mm -hmm. Not that you can anticipate anything like that, but I think the more that he sees it, the more that he's you know, back there in the backfield for us. Hopefully that helps. Talking about maybe um, 
sometimes being too quick for his blockers, maybe being a little bit too over eager. Is that something that you've I've done? I've done a lot of things in this league and take a handoff and run with it has been one that I haven't done. So I'm not, I'm just going to let the run, you know, there are running backs for a reason. You know, we hand it to them and, you know, that's why we tell linemen and receivers not to direct traffic. Like, hey, run over here. I'm blocking over here. Like, just turn and block and we give the guy the ball and they know what to do with it. Two hamstrings this week. Any in-house consideration as to why that's been such a popular injury on this team? Um, I think that they're popular. You know, soft tissue injuries are something that the, the entire um, competitive athletic world deals with. Um, you know, we'll continue to monitor it, um, you know, whether they're high or not. You know, we are, we're always trying to do uh, what's best for the players and, and focus on things and how we warm up, how we prepare, um, you know, and then it's obviously there's there's a large part that, you know, is on each individual to make sure that they're ready to go. And, you know, some, some things, you know, we understand that are just going to happen and come up and that are part of, you know, playing football. So everybody has a part in, in trying to take care of the, the health and safety of the player. Um, you know, we're, 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 not, we're not panicking. We're not changing the way that we structure practice. And, um, you know, we walked through on Wednesday. We you know, stretched. We ran striders. Like, I would say that that's not uh, something that would load the load the player. And so, we just have to make sure that as we work our way through the games, and we see how guys feel, and you know that we're staying on top of this stuff. Do you think the schedule of the year maybe leads to more soft tissue injuries? With it's it's been like this, you know, for forever. And and again, I don't think anybody has a definite answer. I know that I listen to the information that's provided from the NFL. I listen to the information that's provided from the NFL PA, our, the coaches talk, you know, I mean, how we structure practice. We're conscious of our days off. We're conscious of um, regeneration days. I mean, 10 years ago, there wasn't, I didn't know what regeneration day is when we were in the middle of 10 two days in training camp. Like nobody knew what any of this stuff was. But we're trying to focus on those things. You ask other coaches, you know, how are you guys doing it? Um, so it, it's just, it's a process. You know, we understand that our game, our business, our fans, this is all because of the players and the athlete. And the more that you can have the athlete um, out there and available, the better the team can be and the better the product is. If you've got a player, you know, who's maybe at like 80% or something like that, how is it for a coach and, and a former player with mm -hmm. that line like to say, you know, can you can you give us, you know, all that you can, eighty percent, or or you know, if they say I can't go, do you just leave it at that, or, or you know, do you ever say eighty percent of you is better than nothing? You know, how, what's what's that like? I I'm not going to get into those discussions, um, but I would say that we use three things that I've referenced here before that I've tried to explain to you whether you wrote it down or whether you kept the recording, but it's can they make it worse? Can they do their job up to the standard that we expect it? And can they take care of themselves in, in battle? And not to say this is a war, but you know, that those guys, they're trying to inflict pain and they have to be able to protect themselves when they're, when they're out there playing football, as you guys witness each and every week you know, watching these games. So those are what I have to ask. And those are the questions that I ask, and I try to get feedback from a lot of different people. Then I make a decision, if that helps. Sure. If I could get one more green dot question, uh, you, yeah, I believe when, when you played, they didn't have that. And then you also no, they played. did. I didn't play that long ago, Teron. <laughs> no, they did. They did, Teron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll finish the question. How much of a difference does it make? Because I'm sure you've been on the field where the green dot wasn't able to be used. So how much does a difference does that make just uh, communication-wise on the field? You know, I think it, it – it, um, one thing it's done is it's forced um, – I, I, I liked it when, when you signaled, right? Because then everybody had – it forced everybody to look over there. You know, and so, again, when we're in two-minute – you know, we don't have time, and the offense is going fast. You don't have time to, like, rely on one guy to, to try to get 10 other guys to call. So a part of me likes everybody looking over there and getting the signal so that they can understand what's going on, and they're engaged early on in the play as opposed to just sitting there. And 
waiting for it to come through and having somebody tell you what the call is. And so um, it, it does help, though, that you're not signaling, you know, and then the, the DBs can, can get the call and then they can, the safety can echo it to the corners and the, the linebacker can communicate it to the front end. But there is a certain part of me that, that thinks that the guys, you know, put it on them to, to engage and actively look over, get the call, you know. And we've done okay with that. We've done pretty well at that where, you know, let's say Jeff gets the call and then he's echoing it to the front guys and then the linebackers are communicating and the safeties are communicating with the corners. And um, that can always improve. But, uh, you know, teams are going to go fast at different types, at different areas of the field and you know we have to be ready to go whether we can get the call in or not or sometimes teams will sub late you know they shut those off after 15 seconds and so you know offenses know that you know offenses know that so they come out of you know they sub under you know 15 seconds and get in the huddle and you know break you can't make a call so you're changing personnel and you have to signal because they shut off you know once you're under 15 seconds that thing just gives you a loud beep so um, you know I think it's good for the game uh, but, uh, you know, I don't think you can rely on it. Those things go out um, like like cell phone service and everything else. We've had our quarterbacks, you know, they go out and we have a system set up for, for our quarterbacks to be able to um, get into a play based on the personnel and, and give them a menu of things to do when the when the headsets go out. What do you hope to be able to do as a member of competition? Um, I really just try to make the game better. You know, that's uh, it's it's a it's a great honor. Uh, try to focus on the uh, areas improvement, you know, just trying to make the, the, the game better, uh, you know, make it a better product and uh, try to make it obviously safer and uh, the best that we can. The salute to service, I guess, Veterans Day weekend, is that extra unique maybe across the NFL, maybe even day back your day as a player? Yeah, I think that that's important. I think that this is a, a, a Phenomenal opportunity to recognize the, the 19 or so million living um, veterans uh, in our country um, that are family members, that are friends. You know, I had an opportunity to explain to the team about Veterans Day and you know Armistice Day and, and how it started on the 11th hour, or the, you know November 11th, and Congress changing it to Veterans Day and. And I had an opportunity when I was in Kansas City to go visit the VA hospital and spend some time with those men. There was a VA hospital near Arrowhead. And, um, you know, th those, those men and women, they, they don't come back. Sometimes they don't come back the same as when they left. And I think we need to be conscious of that, just like in our game. You know, they suffer from headaches, body aches, concussions, anxiety, um, much like pro football players do when they're done except the, the pensions and the 401k and the annuities uh, probably aren't, I guarantee aren't the same. So I think it's a great thing for that we, you know, we do, and I hope our players are mindful of that and respectful of that.